Hello, this is Sean again. It's 3.21 p.m. on the Pacific Northwest, and welcome. There's a lot of things you don't know about my life, and some things were brought about by what happened in my life and my daughter's. It was a hard road, no doubt. All of you who've read my book know that it was uh, uh, terribly upsetting. I want to ask the justice system why are these people let go on a class three sexual assault, rape, molestation of children? It's like our children are lower than their adult counterparts. I mean, these children will grow up. The after effects devastating. They don't forget or they block it out. And when they block it out, they end up sometimes accusing the wrong person. It's very common. But that's how bad it is. A child cannot defend themselves like an adult. And an adult even has a hard time defending themselves if something bad like this is happening. Beaten, baseball bats. You know, you do not need a gun to kill somebody. Or to make somebody even do anything. It depends on the d intimidation level. I have been studying pedophiles for a long time. I am a children's rights person, probably because of where I came from. Also the fact that it, um, I don't know if something like that runs in your family or not, but there's been, uh, might as well say it, a few males in my family that uh, are scum. So I'm going to skip to one, because the one happens to be my brother. He's close in age to me. He's, uh, let's see, 50. And my other sister's 18 months younger than I am, so, and he came right after her. So he's about 50, 51. He is a class three offender. He hurt two little girls. He refuses to take classes. But he does write letters, which are supposed to be looked over and read before they leave that prison and go into the hands of the U.S. Postal Service. He went ahead and he wrote, my daughter, who has PTSD as bad as I do. I can't weigh and measure who has it worse. This is bad. And he told her things that he would like to do to her, which is what we call verbal sexual assault. And then he admitted in his first letter to her that he had in fact hurt those two little girls and explained what he would like to do with them more. He draws phallic, system, uh, uh, phallic pictures. He draws pictures of things that the normal human being really don't want to see. It's like the monitoring level is really low. It's a minimum security prison that's going to have to go maximum because of all the prisons closed him down. Do not ask me why my brother was put into a minimum security prison when he has 8,888 years to go. 
He's violent. He rapes. He accuses. He uses language that only hell would use. And he calls his victims names that you as parents or regular people would just would not believe. After my daughter got the letters, of course, you know, they were turned over to her Washington State counselor. She'll be in counseling for the rest of her life. I can't state how atypical, not atypical, because you show signs, so typical book that my brother is. There's several types of pedophiles, and, they, and some take family members, and some take strangers' kids, some take them off the street, some of them, I, they're all different, every one of them. My brother took somebody's children that he knew, and he babysat them. What is it that it takes for the judicial system, the prison system? I know that you've been cut back on guards, but why don't you go through their letters more? I would prefer a killer that got pissed at somebody, basically in manslaughter, let out before these things are let out. They should never be let out. I don't care if it is their first offense. Now, the sad thing is, is that you have to register as a sexual offender if you are class one or two. Class one is uh, basically peeing in public. I mean, seriously. Should be a fine and you should not have to go to jail. Erg. Class two is statutory rape. The circumstances need to be looked at very close as to why, how old, what was going on, who pressed the charges, was the girl willing? Usually it's somebody over 18. And the girl is usually 16. 16 is the mark. You go from 16 on statutory. Below that, it is pedophile crime. Different states, okay? Some aren't like that. 18 years of age in Washington State is the legal consent age for sexual contact not 17, not 16. And why would a 42-year-old man prefer somebody 18? I don't care if he's going through the change of life. And the same for women who do that. It is wrong. It is. It's rare. And usually the woman has been the victim at some time. Angry, hurt, confused. She becomes a, a predator or a perpetrator. One time, several times. That's class two. Class three is rape, mutilation, murder, child pornography, things that you only hear in horror stories, and you don't want to hear them in real life. I'm asking that you write your local senators and Congress and ask for stiffer laws for class three offenders. The stiffer law would be that they never be released, ever.
it would be life in prison plus no parole. They are dangerous. They do not stop. Some do become model citizens. And on the side, they still have their child pornography, books, and internet, and they still have some kid out there that's not going to talk. I'd also like to see the laws change in um, the way that a, a person, an adult, can go back after three years any time, just like a murder, and have charges pressed against the perpetrator, the predator. Right now, it's like, I'm sorry, your three or seven years is up, so you can't press charges. Press charges. Make loud noises. But please do write your senators and Congress, and even the President of the United States. I have. Sometimes I'm ignored, sometimes I'm not. By local Congress and Senate. You want to stop them. You don't want this to continue any longer. <laughs> We're not allowed to have vigilantism. But if you let a perpetrator go within a few years for good behavior, that's when the anger becomes vile. It's not an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. It is honest to goodness breakdown in the soul. They broke the soul. Victims are very strong. We don't end up being the victim. But fighting is what we do do. We fight back. Because we refuse to be a victim. If I had to do it all over again, I'd have fought to the death. Nobody should intimidate you. Nobody. And tell, tell and listen to your children when they say, so-and-so did this. Now, it might be real, it might not be real, but you really have to look at it and take it seriously and don't call the child a liar. And don't disown your own kids because your husband, your boyfriend, your your wife or whatever has been touching your children. Mm -hmm. They're usually telling the truth. And you do not kick your children out because of this. This owning is very common. Especially for incest. Well, I'm sure I can find much more to say. It's been my subject for years. And it's ugly. It's the ugly part of my channel. Or sad. But I'm never going to give up the fight. It's empowerment. Scream loud. Make yourself known. And don't let them get away with it anymore. Have a good day. Bye-bye.